This is a vision that Brother Sadiq Ibrahim from Nigeria had about the rapture. He also saw many people in hell. He said he saw many notable pastors in hell, and also many politicians whose attitude are already sending them to hell. And also send warning to many of our current pastors that are still alive, to take heed lest they end up in hell. In this video the names of some of the pastors which he claimed he saw are mentioned, so watch this carefully with prayer and trust in God for discernment. May God give you understanding. After a 40 days fast that I was requested to go through by the Lord in the place of prayer, I suddenly saw a light around me and then heard the audible voice of the Lord saying, Men have seen the sky, the sun, moon and stars, the mountains and the hill, and yet they fear me not. I will not hold my peace any more, I am coming to judge the earth. Suddenly I saw an open vision of rapture. The first person I saw in the vision was the Lord Jesus Christ himself. I have seen him on several occasions before now so I know him. The Lord allowed me to see the present condition, not future destination, of everyone he has privileged me to meet in my two and a half years journey with him as well as many others that I have never met including those the Lord said I will meet in future. 1. I saw those who were going up in glory with the Lord. 2. I saw those who were going down in destruction. Those in category 2 were far more in number compared to those in category 1. There were those who were not seen in category I or 2. The Lord says these ones are hiding in darkness for there is nothing hidden in the light. Most of the ministers who are going up in glory, the Lord says, are not the popular ministers known by men on earth, but are known by Him. However, I saw some ministers of the gospel that I know. Most of the major ministers in Nigeria were seen going down in destruction. The Lord says this is the season of judgment. He says He cannot bear any longer what they are doing in His name, for He is coming to judge the earth, yet it is not too late if they repent, but he says, if you refuse to be sincere with yourself and repent, you know where you are going, your destiny is eternal destruction. Just some of the major minsters among the so many minsters in destruction are going to be mentioned here for the purpose of their redemption. The Lord says it is not his will for you to be where you are right now and you know it. These include Pastor Enoch, Adeboy Redeemed Christian Church of God Bishop David Oidepo, Living Faith Church Pastor Tunda Bakar Lata Rain Assembly, Pastor Ayo Ritsija for President, Christian Association of Nigeria, Dr. Olukoya Mountain of Fire and Miracles, Matthew Ashimoluo King's Way Church United Kingdom, Pastor Chris Oyakulam, Christ Embassy, Chris Okoti Household of God, Evangelist Mayukai, and many others. I have never met or known any of these ministers. However, some of these ministers were brought to me in the place of prayer for intercession during the 40-day fast preceding this vision. The Lord introduced them to me as lost ministers. Christian national leaders from other countries include Joel Osteen, Kenneth Copeland, Bishop T.D., Jakes, Joyce Meyer, Rod Parsley, Mike Murdoch, Paula White, Ron Kennelly, Pastor Donnie McClurkin, Pat Robertson, Pope Benedict, Duncan Williams, and many others. The essence of these names is for these people to be warned by those who know them and love them, so there can be a change in their ways before it is too late. My responsibility is to simply report what I saw and to warn, so I am free of their blood. There are many other lost ministers whose names cannot be listed here, but let everyone examine himself before the searchlight of the Holy Spirit. Each of us must confront ourselves with the gospel of truth before it is too late forever, Ezekiel 3, verse 17 to 21. Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel, therefore hear a word from my mouth and give them warning from me when I say to the wicked, you shall surely die and you give him no warning, 
nor speak to warn the wicked from dot his wicked way to save his life. That same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. Yet if you warn the wicked, and he does not turn from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but you have delivered your soul. When a righteous man turns from his righteousness, and commits iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die, because you did not give him warning, he shall die in his sin and his righteousness which he has done shall not be remembered, but his blood I will require at you hand. Nevertheless, if you warn the righteous man that the righteous should not sin, and he does not sin, he shall surely live, because he took warning you will have delivered your soul, Ezekiel 33 verse 7 to 11. So you, son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Therefore you shall hear a word from my mouth and warn them for me, when I say to the wicked, O wicked man, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will require at your hand. Nevertheless, if you warn the wicked to turn from his way, and he does not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but you have delivered your soul. Therefore you zero son of man, say to the house of Israel, thus you say, if our transgressions and our sins lie upon us, and we pine away in them, how can we then live? Say to them as I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way, and live, turn, turn from your evil ways, for why should you die? O house of Israel, the truth is like a double-edged sword, which if received reverently could comfort us, and if rejected could crush us. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 to 13, NIV. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit. Joints and marrow it judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. God's intention is to reconcile every lost person back to himself. Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 23 NIV Do I take any pleasure in the death of the wicked? declares the Sovereign Lord. Rather am I not pleased when they turn from their ways and live. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 18 to 21 Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation, that is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. 21 For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 3 to 5 For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Saviour, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men the man Christ Jesus. This vision is a demonstration of grace and love from the Father heart of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16 to 17 Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Romans chapter 11 verse 12 Now if their fall is riches for the world, and their failure riches for the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? For if their being cast away is the reconciling of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? Matthew 23, 39, For I say to you, you shall see me no more till you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The Lord is saying that these leaders must return to him with weeping. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 7, Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous his thoughts let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Luke chapter 15 verse 14 to 21 But when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in that land, 
and he began to be in want. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. I saw many national leaders, including Barack Obama and good luck Ebel Jonathan going down in destruction. They also must be warned when I looked at the people who were going up with the Lord, they were very calm, at peace, and full of joy. When I looked down at the people in destruction, I was surprised because some of them were supposed to be the people of God that I know. They were crying out in agony and pain. Yet the Lord said there was nothing He could do except they repent. At this point I had questions in my mind. Then the Lord told me to ask questions. I asked that, where is the destination of these people who are going up with you? The Lord said that they are coming to be with me where I prepared for them. I asked again, for those going down in destruction, where is their destination? The Lord said, they are going down to hell, except they repent. I asked again, why are these people in destruction? He said, hypocrisy. What they are in their mouth is not what they are in their heart. Matthew 15, 7 to 9, hypocrites. Well did Isaiah prophesy about you, saying these people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, and in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. 2. Submitting to the spirit of paranoid that does not allow them to see sin as God sees it, thus making light what is serious in his sight. This spirit works directly against the spirit of truth. John 16, 13-14 However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. John 16, 7-11 Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin, and of righteousness, and of judgment of sin, because they do not believe in me of righteousness, because I go to my Father Dot and you see me no more of judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged, Consequently, they are not pure in heart, for only the pure in heart will see God. Matthew chapter 5, verse 8, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Hebrews 12, 14, Pursue peace with all people, and holiness, without which no one will see the Lord. My going down into hell. When the Lord told me that the people in destruction are going to hell, except they repent, then I asked the Lord, Can I see the place? He said, Yes. You can see hell because you asked in a right way. The Lord said, Come with me. And the next thing I saw is that we were walking together in hell. When we got to hell, the Lord said to me, This is the place you wanted to see. Don't be afraid because of who I will allow you to see and what I will show you. The place was very terrible. It was dark and I could hear screams of billions upon billions of people, men and women. Though the place was dark, I could still see because the light of God was shining. His face was shining like the sun in its strength. I saw the flames of fire looking reddish and multitudes of people as though they were swimming in the fire. The people I was allowed to speak to were in their individual pits of fire. These pits of fire are literally billions upon billions. They would try to come out of the pit but it was as if the fire would melt them. I saw billions upon billions of demons running around. 
these demons were more or less making mockery of those there. The Lord said, I will allow you to talk with three men who were top preachers from your country, but are now in hell. These are people I never met or knew on earth. Each of these men introduced himself to me and acknowledged that he deserved to be there in hell. The first person I talked with was Archbishop Benson Idahosa, Church of God Mission International. When I saw his state of suffering in hell, then I asked him some questions. Why are you here? He said, because of covetousness and I was full of self-righteousness while I was on earth. And I deserve to be here, I asked again. Are you used to the pains and the suffering? He answered, no, the suffering is new every day. Let me just stop at this point. While I was talking with him, his flesh would melt as if acid was poured on his face. All the time he was talking with me, he was in torment in his own pit of fire. The next person I talked with was Baba Paul Jindiri New Life for All Church. While I was looking at him, he was screaming in his own pit of fire. As he would try to talk, fire would come from his mouth, melting his throat. Then the throat came back again, and he was able to talk with me. I asked him, why are you here? He said, my works brought me here. I asked, what works? He said, guile, deceit, hypocrisy, falsehood. I said, but I was touched by some of your messages. I have listened to, yet you are here. Is your message that we are listening to also going to bring us here? He said, no, I asked, why? He said, if you allow the Spirit of the Lord to lead you and not your human mind, your life will glorify God through the message. The next person I spoke with was Pastor Philip Mukuga Oasis Church, Plateau State. He was talking with me with his head upside down. The Lord says that was the state of his punishment at that hour. I asked, who are you and why are you here? He answered, I am Pastor Philip Mukunga. Now I know I am nothing and myself will brought me here and I've already sowed the seed of self-will and selfish desire in my family. The more it grows, the more my punishment in hell increases. I was walking right with God, then I gave room to the devil and he cut me off. He succeeded through my desire, and at the end I divorced my wife. This was the first step that separated me from God, and I took it very lightly. Now I am here as a result of my self-will, he also gave me a message for his family. While I was talking with him, I also saw a woman who was a very popular female preacher from Nigeria. She introduced herself saying, See me, see me, see me. Bimbo Adukoya. But I was not allowed to talk to her, but she was allowed to talk to me. She said what brought her there was secret sin, though she did not state what the secret sin was. The Lord makes it clear that it is iniquity that took her there. Ten other people spoke to me, but I was not. Allowed by the Lord to speak to them. Eight of them are of other nationalities. Non-Nigerians. One. There was a man I met in Indonesia where I went preaching in 2009. He said he was in hell because of wrong counseling. He was a counselor who was giving people wrong counsel. Two. One of them said, he is there because of the spirit of irresponsibility. Three. Another said he came there because of gossip. 4. Another said he is there because of the spirit of bitterness. 5. A lady said she came there because of lying in the name of God. 6. There was a young man who said he was arrested while on earth for preaching the gospel and the devil cut him off in prison when he compromised his faith. 7. There was a woman who was just wailing but I could not pick out her words Eight. There was an elderly man who said he wished he was me, because looking at me I was not feeling what he was feeling. 9. I saw a young girl with a very long hair with different colors. She was an occultic girl who was in the choir of her church. 10. The last person was a young man. He said he called himself into the ministry, because he desired to help God. The hand of the Lord was not on him, and therefore no grace. He went to so-called men of God seeking anointing of the Holy Spirit. As they prayed for him, they transferred the same evil spirits in them into him. 
he gave me a message saying, Be careful of those you allow to lay hands on you. The three men the Lord allowed me to speak with were very popular preachers on earth. God, however, is not a respecter of persons, for he is a just judge. Acts chapter 10 verse 34 to 35, Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation he that feareth him, and worketh righteousness, is accepted with him. Romans chapter 2 verse 11, For there is no respect of persons with God. Psalm 711, God is a just judge and God is angry with the wicked every day. Romans 11.22 Therefore consider the goodness and severity of God on those who fell, severity but toward you, coming out of hell. After the Lord brought me out of hell, I was back in the light where I was before. Then I said, Lord, can I ask a question? Why not? He answered. Lord, why did you allow me to have this experience? I am afraid seeing these men in hell, then the Lord said to me, I allowed you to see these men in hell because of the message you are carrying for this generation. I now ask the Lord, can I carry this message seeing these people who labored in your vineyard yet ended up in hell, the said to me, that is their choice. They knew the truth, but they refused to conform themselves with the truth. You can carry the message because of the anointing that is upon your life. But Lord, you anointed these men as well and yet they have ended up in hell. It is because of their choice. If you also choose the wrong road like them, you will end up where they are. But my desire is that you continue on the right road. This warning of course applies to all those going up with the Lord in glory. What about those people who listen to their messages? Would they be saved or lost like them if they believe in me? It is not their message, it is my message. Then the Lord raised his two hands and was leaving. Then I asked him, Lord, When are you coming to take us? He said, I myself do not know. Only the Father, as he said this, he was looking up towards heaven. After this he went up. There were many angels with him in the clouds and they went back with him. The end of the vision, after they left, as I looked. I was shocked to find myself still in the place of prayer where I first knelt before the Lord the previous day, 2nd of September. I realized I had been with the Lord for about 24 hours. Yet there was no weariness or weakness in my body. Then an anointing came upon me, and the names of some of the people I had seen in the vision were coming to me, especially the lost ministers for prayer. I was given specific prayer points for each of them. The general prayer for all the lost ministers is for God to open their spiritual eyes to see the need to conform themselves with the gospel of truth. After this I gave thanks to the Lord for about an hour. I called Pastor Kelvin Stewart, my pastor who said he tried to reach me the previous day without succeeding. He was assured by the Lord that I was all right, that I was with him and would call early in the morning, which is what happened. Pastor Kelvin has shared the vision with the people with whom we are relating as it affects them, and there has been genuine repentance amongst us. Why the vision? It is a warning and a wake-up call to save the lost ministers and sinners in and outside the organized church. 2. To fit the saved for greater service in the kingdom of God. The time is at hand. Men must bow to worship the King Jesus and then arise to establish his kingdom where we live and work. May we be found rapture ready in Jesus' name. Thanks for watching this video to the end. May God's grace and mercy see you all through in Jesus' powerful name. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, and more so share the video with your friends and family. And if you are confused at any point, please don't hesitate to put down your question in the comments section. God bless you richly.